Hello, and welcome back. For today's energizing episode, we'll be looking at the electrical generator here on the Matt Yasa channel. In my left hand, I have a 16 millimeter borosilicate tube. It's a standard wall, so it's extra thin. And I'm gonna attach a seven millimeter rod to make a leg. I'll be making two more so that this device can stand upright. First, I'll do a small U-bend here for an off axis punty. And so I'm attempting to make here a very simple hand crank electric generator. This will be very similar to the electromagnet episodes, but instead of applying power to it to receive magnetism, I'm going to apply magnetism to receive power. A lot of times physics is backwards compatible like that, a certain symmetry. And now that that's done, I'm gonna open up a small hole a couple inches down to rip off the tubing without closing it up. I normally blow the holes out from the inside, but I'm gonna remove some glass and then begin to swipe it over with a clear rod to keep thinning out that wall until it just rips open in the flame. And now if I didn't open up that hole first and just melted the tube in half, then it would have closed up in the flame on both sides. And I want the end open in order to fit the rotor inside. And the rotor is the internal piece in which you apply the mechanical force to in order to rotate and create electricity. And now the stator, which is the piece I'm working on here, is the external housing which holds the rotor. I'm going to wrap the outside with some wire to help conduct the magnetic field while the inside of the rotor will hold a magnet. I have some powerful neodymium magnets. When it moves within the coils, it should produce electricity. And now in this animation, you've probably noticed the poles of the magnetic field aren't actually moving through the wires. The field itself seems to be moving through it, but I'm not sure if that's going to be enough. And so I thought I might need to order a new neodymium magnet, one that isn't magnetized from end to end but from side to side. There's multiple ways to orientate the magnet and even some different ways to arrange the wires also. And so instead of just copying straight from my working design, I thought I would try to figure it out myself using a little bit of trial and error. That is a great way to learn. You not only eventually pick up what you're aiming for, but gain a little bit of wisdom along the way. And so what I'm aiming for on this project is to pick up some kind of reading on my voltmeter. I'm kind of setting the bar low. It doesn't really matter how small of a reading, just something that's there. But hopefully if I can get a good readout, then I can improve the design and make it actually pretty functional. And so as I rotate the rotor, the magnetic poles will continually pass over the wire, alternating from north to south. So this should give us AC or alternating current. I think a good analogy for this would be the ocean's tide. It constantly brings water in and out from the shore, alternates the height of the water higher and lower, which can even be harnessed to create power. And so the difference from that would be direct current, which moves in one direction, almost a little similar to a water slide or a garden hose. 
And now I believe there's a few ways to convert AC to DC. There's an electrical component called a rectifier. You can also supposedly pass the current through a diode. Since diodes only run in one direction, it should send the current forward, but not backward. But then lastly, maybe I can wire the rotor in a way to reverse the polarity every half turn. And now I'm bending the crank or the handle for the rotor. I'm just using a little bit of heat to keep it right at that melting point and then using gravity to bend it into shape. I do prefer to use gravity quite often to make bends or pull glass out. It is a very useful tool. When you're using your hands, it can be very difficult to hold them perfectly steady. There's always a little bit of shake here or there, little movements. But with gravity, it's just a continual flow. Just a very continual and steady rate. So it can give you a very good shape or form. And so I hope you're enjoying the video so far. If so, make sure to hit the like button. You can also impress your family and friends with your art and scientific interests by sharing these videos, either in person or on Facebook. Also, of course, don't forget to subscribe. If this little generator works, I might end up powering some little device and you don't wanna miss that. And so I'll punt you up one more time here to finish off the backside with the brass reamer. This way the rotor can fit all the way through the generator. And so I made a slight oversight here. The handle is a bit longer than the legs. It should only require one quick bend to fix it. And then I'll cut off the remaining glass with my tile snips. Wetting your cutting tools normally helps make a cleaner cut, along with trapping some glass dust you don't want to breathe in. And now I'll go ahead and turn off the torch and begin to wind up the coil. I'm using 24 gauge magnet wire. It's a thin conductive copper wire which is coated with a thin red enamel to keep it from cross conducting. And so we'll begin with the small cylinder neodymium magnet. And hey, I think it's working. We're getting a little bit of power coming through on alternating current. And I'm gonna wind up some more coil to see if I can get a more powerful effect. Just wrapping it back and forth about 10 times. It's also very tight. I'm basically trying to squeeze as much copper wire into the smallest space possible. I also ordered a new magnet, a longer one with the poles that travel side to side instead of front to back. I'll try the smallest one first and right away I notice a increase in power with the extra coils. Not a lot of power overall, since we're only looking at millivolts here. And now to try the new magnet. It's heavy. The rotor wasn't really designed for this size of magnet, so I'll just spin it with my fingers instead. You can see as I pick up the speed, we do get a slight increase in voltage. Not really a whole lot considering the size of this magnet. I'm a little bit disappointed in the results. We might have a problem here with the coil itself. So I was running a test of rubbing the magnets perpendicular and parallel with the coils to see which one would produce the most power. And perpendicular or against the coils seem to work best. And so I'm gonna turn the torch back on and work on a new design. Instead of the magnet running through the center in parallel with the lines of the coil, it will run perpendicular 
And I was trying to figure out why this would make a difference. And it seems to me like the poles are traveling more length of the wire from end to end. Where in the other direction, the poles of the magnet are centered more in the middle of the coil. And so I'm not sure if that's the difference or if it has something else to do with it, but it sort of reminds me of my third electromagnet video, the Iron Snake. I was rotating a large magnet back and forth, and you can see the iron filings kind of waving along to that motion. And so I tried to imagine how that would apply to the coil from end to end. And I know those two things might not seem as relevant, but it's good to keep an open mind when it comes to physics. And so I've attached two 7 millimeter rods onto my larger, thinner walled tube. The rods will serve as the core for the coils to hold them in place. I went with a smaller diameter rod to fit more wire into a smaller space. And I could probably put even some more additional coils around the side, but I figured let's keep it simple and try to compare this one to the last one. I'll be using the same wire to wrap it with, so unfortunately I've already unwound the last one. We'll just have to use what we've seen already for the results to compare to. And so I'm making the new rotor right now. I could use the mechanical advantage of gears to make it spin even faster and generate more power. But I want to keep it simple for this demonstration. And so I'm just bending up the handle now. Both of the tubes ended up quite a bit longer this time in order to hold my new neodymium magnet, which is polarized from side to side. And now I thought, why not add a little bit of flair to the handle and attach a small opal. I encased a handful of opals earlier in the year, and I've been attaching them to my work every once in a while. I did get another set of some even larger opals, so I'll be doing another opal episode pretty soon. They do flash a lot of different color, almost like a little frozen rainbow. It's unfortunately one of those things you just have to see in person to really get the full experience. I feel the same way about these kind of science experiments. You can definitely read about an experiment or watch it happen in a video, but you never really get the full experience. You know, you're missing that little bit of data, your first hand observation. But now let's collect some data here as we try to spark some life into this copper golem. And so I'll be rotating here at three different speeds. This first one's a bit slow, about 30 rotations per minute. You'll see how the speed of the rotation or how quickly the magnet's poles pass over the wire will affect the voltage. And so at 30 RPMs, we ended up with an average of about 35 millivolts. I will admit that isn't quite much at all, but it's a good start. It's been quite a journey with electromagnetism here on the channel. I started with a simple vessel filled with iron filings to a device that can generate power. I'm really curious and excited to find out where this is going to lead. But now for this experiment, and it's led us to the end of this video. I want to thank you for joining me, coming along on these fun scientific adventures. Make sure to hit that subscribe button so you see what's coming up ahead, here on the Matt Yasa channel. Thank you.